Hey you guys, I wanted to come and make a short video about a discovery that I just made that just blew me away. Um, and that is that Corona is coronary. Yes, that's what I just said. Corona is coronary. And I'm going to prove it. All right. So, um, I saw a video by Pastor Air Bernard who, who found out that he had, um, the COVID virus and he went to the hospital. And what he said in the hospital is what sent me down this rabbit trail. So um, I'm going to show all of my research. Um, for those of you who like to do research as well, that way you can um, tell me what you find as well. All right. Obviously, for those of you who follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know I don't believe everything I'm told, especially on the media. Um, so I'm the type that's going to research everything. All right. And so I'm starting to connect some dots and I want to run these dots by you to see if you see what I see. But these dots that I done found, you can't even, you can't refute them. It's solid evidence and research behind what I found. And I'm going to con connect the dots. All right. So the first thing that put me on the path I saw, and I'm going to play it for you guys. Let me see was a video of one of my favorite pastors, Dr. L. Bernard. And he recently um, recovered from COVID-19. And so he said something that struck me odd. And I'm going to share it with you right now. All right, so. Pattern and the same common thread of experiences for those who experience it severely. Now, of course, remember they tested me Mm -hmm. But the tests didn't come back for days. Um, but I had all the symptoms of COVID-19, uh, full-blown COVID-19. So you're having the hallucinations. You feel fear. You feel anxiety. You you feel stress. You're trying to hold it down. Then you begin to feel disoriented. You're not sure where you are. And you're like coming and going. Um, and, you know, the nurses are trying to do everything they can. The doctors are coming in. Shout out to and the nurses. my doctors, my pulmonary specialist made a decision uh, to treat me. So they started treating me with the um, hydroxychloroquine, okay. which is for malaria and lupus. Uh, and they started to treat me with that. They started to treat me with azithromycin, which is an antibiotic. And they also began to give me shots in my stomach of anticoagulants because another way that people were dying so quickly is because the virus would create blood clots oh, wow. that would quickly go through the lungs and, of course, affect the heart. So they were wondering why. Are All right. So he I want to point out a couple of things he just said that you may not have caught. So. First thing he said, he had a pulmonary a pulmonary doctor. My doctors, my pulmonary specialist made a decision uh, to treat me. All right. So his pulmonary specialist made a decision to treat him. All right. So keep that word in mind, pulmonary. Of course, affect the heart. So they had to treat me with azithromycin, which is an antibiotic. All right, listen to this again. And they also began to give me shots in my stomach of anticoagulants because another way that people were dying so quickly is because the virus would create blood clots oh, wow. that would quickly go through the lungs and, of course, affect the heart. So they were wondering, why are people dying overnight like that? Mm. And it's because of that. So the anticoagulants were to keep my blood from clotting. So All right. So he said one of the ways that people were dying so quickly was from when they would shoot them in the stomach. Um, they would get a blood clot, and the blood clot would affect the heart. All right, so keep the the word pulmonary in mind that he just used, and the word blood clot. So, on one of my favorite Facebook friends' pages, and he posts this. Now, if you've noticed, Facebook has been censoring a lot of um, stories lately, right? So. Whenever something doesn't work or gets taken down, a lot of times I'm like, okay, that's that must be the truth because they wouldn't take it down if it wasn't the truth. So this says autopsies prove that COVID-19 is a disseminator intravascular coagulation. Remember he said his blood would um, coagulate, right? Pulmonary 
thrombosis. So at one time they we were trying to get the doctors not to do autopsy and just call it COVID, just call it COVID, right? So when you click on this link, it disappears. Oh, they took it down already. But because I am so curious, I was like, uh, did Pastor Bernard use that word pulmonary thrombosis? So let me look it up. So I went to look up pulmonary pulmonary thrombosis. So pulmonary embolism occurs when a clump of material, most often a blood clot, gets wedged into an artery in your lungs. These blood clots most commonly commonly come from the deep veins of your legs as a condition known as deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary um, embolism. So I kept looking. Okay, this is a blood, this is a blood clot that gets caught in an artery. Blood clot, blood clot, blood clot, right? Okay. So I'm like, this is interesting. So for some reason, I remembered that he said something about the heart. So something told me to write, put this in. I'm going to say it's God, right? So coronary thrombosis is a formation of a blood clot inside a blood vessel of the heart. I'm like, hmm, didn't I remember somebody talking about people that were starting with heart disease? Let's see. Heart disease, one of the main one of the main pre-existing uh, underlying conditions, C. Is the health in clevelandclinic.org. COVID poses a greater risk to people who have underlying conditions, including coronary heart disease, diabetes, and bl- high blood pressure. Escocardio.org. Individuals with heart conditions, such as heart failure, dilated cardiomyopathy, advanced forms of arrhythmogenic right ventricular. So just, just focus on that. Harvard. Some women with pre-existing heart disease who becomes ill with COVID may suffer a heart attack or develop congestive heart failure. I'm like, wait a minute, heart disease, heart disease. Wait a minute, what's another name for heart disease? Y'all, it's been right in our face the whole time and we didn't even notice. We take COVID out. What word is in coronary? So I'm gonna put this right here so you can't see the rest. Corona. Corona. Coronary. I'm like, wait a minute. Let me prove this. So I study the etymology of words. I'm gonna show you. So we got to look up the etymology of the word Corona. I put this up on my Facebook. Nobody responded because people don't like to read for whatever reason. But I put this up a while ago, but I didn't know about the part two until it came to me recently. So Corona is a crown from Latin Corona, a crown, a garland in ancient Rome, especially a crown or garland bestowed for distinguished military service to turn or to bend. With many extended senses in botany and anatomy, a coronavirus, this word didn't get admitted until 1969, but the word corona has been around since 1650s and has nothing to do with the beer. A coronavirus is so-called for the spikes that protrude from its membranes and resembles the tines of a crown or the corona of the sun. The two crown constellations, Corona Borealis and Corona Australis, are both Potomaic. I hope I said that right. Astronomical sense of luminous circle observed around the sun during total eclipses. That's from 1809. All right. So we go down to coronary. Coronary. Uh, let me put this on another page so y'all can just 
you got it. You got to see this. Coronary. So we're gonna put the definition of corona up here. All right, y'all see that? That's the definition of corona. And here's the definition of cor coronary: suitable for garlands, pertainable to a crown, resembling a crown, both older senses now obsolete. From Latin coronarius, or of or belonging to a wreath, presenting a garland-like growth from a corona wreath crown. This is the exact same, the exact same verbiage or definition. Anatomical use is from 1670s in reference to the blood vessels that supply the muscular substance of the heart and surround it like a crown. Coronary artery is recorded from 1741 as a noun meaning a blockage of the flow of blood to the heart caused by a clot in a coronary artery. It, it dates back from 1955, short for coronary thrombrosis. There's that word again. Where did we see the word? Pulmonary thrombrosis. This is where the doctors are starting to say, wait a minute, this isn't corona. This is pulmonary thrombosis, according to the autopsies, not corona. Or, well, it is corona, but it's not what the mainstream media is saying it is. Corona, quote unquote, virus, as they're calling it. Virus to make y'all think it's something that jumps from person to person. This is why the masks don't matter. And this is why people like me have been out with a mask for the whole time and nothing has happened. Coronavirus, let me show you the definitions again. For those of you who want to act blind, coronavirus is heart disease. Heart disease, coronary artery, cor coronary thrombosis. So let's look at coronary thrombosis. Coronary thrombosis is the formation of a black blood clot inside a blood vessel of the heart. This is why the only people that's getting, or most of the people that's getting coronavirus is people with pre-existing conditions. Guess what the pre-existing conditions are? Heart disease. And they're saying coronavirus is a virus. No, coronavirus is coronary, a.k.a. heart disease. Now. These looks this here. Let's look at the symptoms. Now, what have they said the symptoms are for corona, quote unquote, virus? Shortness of breath, fever, uh, can't breathe, loss of oxygen, blah, blah, blah. So, coronary artery disease, which is heart disease, develops when the major blood vessels that supply your heart with blood, oxygen, and nutrients come become damaged or diseased. Let's look at the symptoms. You got chest pain, shortness of breath, or heart attack. But y'all got to see this. Where did it go? Is this the one? These are the risk factors of people with heart disease. Family history, smoking, high blood pressure blood cholesterol levels, diabetes, overweight or obesity, physical inactivity, high stress. We all stress right now, worried about our money and not uh, making sure we don't die in 2020, unhealthy diet. But I got to show you y'all this other page. What page was that? Y'all going to have to start screenshotting stuff because they, they stay busy enough. If you try to go to CDC, for heart disease, oh, the page don't work. I've tried this three days in a row. You can't get to the page on the CDC. Wonder why. You got shortness of breath, heart palpitations, dizziness, a fast heartbeat, nausea, or sweating. It's the exact same symptoms. Look at this. Pulmonary embolism. And then you see here. Deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism is a blockage in one of the pulmonary arteries in your lungs. In most case, pulm cases, pulmonary embolism is caused by blood clots that travel to the lungs from deep veins in the legs or from other parts of the body. 
Because the clots block blood flow to the lungs, pulmonary embolism can be life-threatening. However, prompt treatment greatly reduces the risk of death. Now look at the symptoms here. It says pulmonary embolism symptoms can vary greatly depending on how much your lung is involved, the size of the clots, and whether you have an underlying lung or heart disease. See that? Heart disease. Look at these symptoms. These are e the exact same symptoms. Shortness of breath. Chest pain. You feel like you're having a heart attack. Cough. The cough may produce bloody or blood streaks sputum. I think that's how you pronounce it. Rapid or irregular heartbeat. Lightheadedness or dizziness. Excessive sweating and fever. It's the same exact symptoms. The same exact ones. Let's see what the causes are. You are at risk if you have any of your family members have um, venomous, I think that's how you say it, blood clots or pulmonary embolism. Some medical conditions and treatments put you at risk, such as heart disease. There's that word again, heart disease, cancer, surgery, disorders that affect clotting. All right. So, and let's look at this. How do we, how do you heal heart disease naturally? How you can undo heart disease in 72 hours. He said the Ornish diet, which is a type of vegetarian diet that can reverse the symptoms of heart disease. On the Ornish diet, people eat beans, um, legumes, fruit, grains, and vegetables. You, you can also eat um, low-fat, non-fat dairy. I wouldn't suggest that. I would say go vegan. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. So people following the Ornish diet often Notice that chest pain goes away and there's an increase, increase in blood flow in the heart to the heart in only three weeks. After a year, the arteries are less clogged, and after five years, they experience even more improvement. So diet. While you're sitting at home quarantining, don't eat junk food. Let's see what they're saying. How to reverse heart disease. Can you heart, halt the progress of the progressions of heart disease? How to reverse the progression of coronary. So basically, you're saying stay away from these that create plaque, which is saturated fats, butter, palm oil, coconut oil, meat fats, and milk fats, trans fats, and dietary cholesterol. That means egg yolks and organ meats. Eat a lot more whole foods naturally rich in fiber. So that's fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Lose ex excess body fat. Get moving. So we need to be exercising, walking every day, not just sitting at home in front of the TV all day and in front of the computer. Eat less sugar and industrial food. So we're cutting out the sugar. Stop smoking. Seems simple enough, right? Not always the funnest to do, but hey. If heart disease is killing people like it is, then we need to be way more proactive about making sure we cut down on the obesity, cut down the sugar. I notice a huge difference whenever I do no sugar. And when I try to come go back, it's like my body's like, mm -mm, what is this? Another thing I would say is get an EMF fighter. I'm probably using the wrong term, but um, get some EMF protection stickers. Now, I don't know how this work or works or why it works, but I'll post a link of the ones that I use. But I basically put stickers on my phones, my Wi-Fi, my computers in order to block the radiation. So um, you definitely need something like this with the whole 5G and everything that's being emitted from our computers. Because I can tell you from experience, when I went to my doctor, all my being on my computer for work all the time started 
drastically lowering my energy and I started feeling horrible. So um, it's extremely important that we protect ourselves from this whole 5G radiation thing that can also affect the heart like he was affecting mine. So for you naysayers, I'm talking from experience that I was having heart palpitations. So it's real out here in these Corona streets. All right. Let's go to heart.org. Symptoms of heart disease. I thought I had the flu. Even though heart disease is the number one killer of women in the United States, women often chalk up the symptoms to less threatening conditions like acid reflux, the flu, or normal aging. Let me screenshot this before they take it down. So, literally, flu-like symptoms are what it also feels like to have heart disease. Why are the numbers so abnormal? Guess what the number one killer in the U.S. is? Heart disease. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women. This is the case in the U.S. and worldwide. Corona, quote unquote, for those of you who forgot, Corona is cor coronary. Say it with me. Corona is coronary. Corona is coronary. That's why there's so many um, high numbers because it's been the cause of death for a long time. They just you adding the whole virus thing to it. And de deaths in 2017, 647,000. Heart disease has been the leading cause of death. Above cancer. That's crazy, right? Because You would think it'd be cancer that's been killing so many people. So for them acting like, oh, there's so many people dying, which it is, these numbers have been in effect worldwide. So we need to figure out then what's causing this. So surprising things that lead to heart disease. Cars, planes, and trains, the sound of it, starting at around 50 decibels, traffic noise can raise your blood pressure and the, and the likelihood of heart failure. Interesting. Migraines. Having kids apparently makes you more stressed out and more likely to have heart disease. Yikes. Being short. That's wild. Loneliness. Now, I want to key in on this. It says, having few friends or being unhealthy, happy with your relationships raises your odds of heart disease and stroke by as much as secondhand smoke does. Feeling alone has been linked to high blood pressure and other effects of stress. So join a recreation sports team or your neighborhood walking group. You'll get exercise and a stronger social network. Now, you see why they're making a social distance? And why people in the nursing homes are more the more likely ones to die of this? We can literally die of loneliness. This is wild, man. I hope y'all know this whole coronavirus thing isn't about a virus, because clearly, corona in the form of coronary has been killing people for years. It's been the number one killer. They're using it right now in order to cause the global recession to push their new world order agenda to break down the financial system, make us dependent on them so we'll be slaves again. And I'm not going for it. Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci need to be arrested ASAP. ADHD medication can cause your heart rate to go up and you to have high blood pressure. Long hours at work. Now, there's a link to this that they forgot to mention is long hours on the computer at work can cause you to have a stroke. But I'll get that get to that in a second. Gum disease. So keep your teeth up. A troubled childhood. That's why we gotta heal. Having the flu. Study found that people who ended up in the hospital with a heart attack six times 
um, six times more often in the week after they were diagnosed with influenza. Or is it after they got the flu shot? Who knows? And having a short fuse. You get mad and you be hype and angry all the time. That'll do it. And I think that's the it. So we got to look at something. I had an experience about six months ago where I made a mistake and fell asleep with my phone near my my face, basically. I just fell asleep. You know, you fall asleep and then your your phone might be next to you. Y'all, when I tell you I woke up with heart palpitations, I thought I was having a heart attack. My my heart was doing this. And I was like, what is going on? I was like, there, there. I woke my husband up. Yo, I was like, something's wrong. The same exact night, he had a dream at the same time of the words um, proximity sensor. So he could, he just kept hearing proximity and sensor, proximity sensor. Y'all, we connected on that level, I know. So proximity sensor has to do with your phone being able to tell where you are in proximity to it. Wherever you are in the room, it has these sensors where it knows where you are. That's creepy, right? So I started doing research and I went to my uh, naturopath doctor and she's um, a cute Asian lady. She was like, your phone is making you sick. She was like, you need to turn off your Wi-Fi. And I was like, oh, shoot. So that got me to doing like different um, research. And I was able to find that 4G and different Wi-Fi signals were causing heart palpitations. All right. So keep that in mind. Now, this was happening before the 5G rollout. This is already happening. But with them in pushing 5G, let's look at this. For those of you who think that 5G is a conspiracy theory. Cardiac effects of radio frequency and radiation. This is the Physicians for Safe Technology. Cardio, cardiac disease remains the number one death. That's heart disease. Cause of death globally. Cardiovascular risk factors. What does it say? So electro acute or uh, electrosensitivity is an acute symptom complex in some three percent of individuals who experience heart palpitations. That's what I was having. Headaches, nausea, irritability, which occur in the presence of a cell phone, Wi-Fi router, cell tower, or other wireless devices. Let's see. So in the same article where they're talking about how Wi-Fi can cause heart palpitations. They also bring up the fact that heart disease is the number one cause of death globally. Now let's look at another one. Is 5G technology bad for your health? Italy, and remember Italy had all the people that were dying. Italy found an increase in tumors in the heart in rats exposed to EMF equivalent of a 1.8 gigahertz base station. And remember, Italy is where everything is happening right now, right? Or where everything kicked off. 5G could cause cancer and and heart disease. This is the UK. 5G networks greatly increase the heart rate. Cell phone radiation and cancerous heart tumors in male rats. Do I have to keep going? I can keep going. Y'all, when I tell you there is a direct correlation. Oh, y'all couldn't even see this. Hold on. I want to just show you so you can visit. You. If you put in 5G affects the heart, 5G has to do with the Wi-Fi. And um, 
it affected making you have heart palpitations. So I just want you to see this with your eyes. Cardiovascular, that's heart disease, is the number one cause of death. And then electrosensitivity is an acute symptom complex in some 3% of individuals who experience heart palpitations, headaches, nausea, irritability, which occur from the presence of a cell phone, Wi-Fi router, cell phone tower, or wireless. While we are quote-unquote social distancing and everybody is working from home, guess what everybody is on? Their laptop and their cell phones. And they're working from their computers all day. And we're not moving around like we normally would be moving. We're all at our desks. And the people that have pre-existing heart disease cannot take the excess 5G. So they're experiencing the shortness of breath. There's something triggering this right now. But let's see how long heart disease has been the number one. Let's see, 2008. Heart disease. Yeah, Corona quote-unquote virus, they need to stop calling it a virus because virus makes people think they got to spray stuff down with a Lysol. has nothing to do, although y'all do need to wash y'all hands. I can't believe we had to tell grown people that. But this is crazy. U.S. News. Death in America. Leading causes. We had suicide. Who is number one? Let's see. Oh, they didn't put these in our kidney. Influenza. Don't get me started on that. Cancer. Heart disease. 655,000 people died in 2008 of heart disease. Look at this again. Everybody say it with me. Corona is coronary. Corona is coronary heart disease. It is heart disease. So what are some things you can do to prevent yourself from getting heart disease? You need to exercise. You need to be eating right. Get rid of the... the Fried foods, we need to be making sure we keep our heart rate up, not all the time, but, you know, walking, walking is probably the um, the best way to go about keeping yourself right. If you're not vegan or vegetarian, at least um, eat lean meats if you're going to eat meat. Um, I suggest not eating it at all, especially with these lovely food shortages. Um, if you really want to fast track your healing, you might want to try fasting. Um, fasting has a, a way of healing the body quicker than anything else. But we, we got to value our bodies, y'all. This is basically, this is pre-existing things catching up with you. So with them rolling out 5G, they had to have a scapegoat. So we're going to call it coronavirus and everybody, everybody stay at home while we install these new 5G towers that's affecting us all on a major level. Some of us get affected right away. Um, that's why people at nursing homes, they're lonely. They're getting affected because loneliness is stressful. You wouldn't think it would be, but it is. And um, it's just crazy. You know, you got Bill Gates who has no doctor's degree. And you got pictures of him giving vaccines. How is somebody with no degree who's not a doctor able to give somebody a shot? Yeah. If y'all understood the evilness that is going on right now in terms of tanking the, the economy, calling it coronavirus because they think we're stupid and that we don't read and they won't figure it out that it's really heart disease that was already going to Already killed 655,000 people last year and the year before that. They're using this, something that would already occur with the heart disease, as a excuse to basically kill the economy, cause a recession, and take away our civil liberties. 
we got to fight back. We got to stand up for what's right. We can't let them just run over us. And then we all as a whole got to value how we're eating. We got to get rid of the, um, all the preservatives in the food, you know, the ge- genetically modified seeds, you know, it's evil that the, the governor of Michigan would want to cut off your ability to grow your own food. Like it's an evil agenda going on right now, but I want y'all to get this through your head right now. For those of you who think mask are going to save you. I saw a man who was about 500 pounds in the, uh, He's walking into the chicken shack, had a mask on. I was like, bruh, coronavirus is the least of your worries right now. You need to be getting your heart right. And you need to be getting your, uh, not be going into the, the fried chicken shack. You need to be getting your health on. And I'm not saying it's a shame anybody. I'm saying that there's a direct correlation between you us all being healthy and even i've been vegan before but was eating too many cookies and bread and and eating all kind of sweets talking about i was vegan no i was still eating junk food we gotta stop eating junk food load up on our vitamin c's and everything like that so i just want you to if you don't remember nothing else corona is coronary corona is coronary Corona is coronary. Your mask might make you feel like you're doing something, but it's really not. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your your inner health and how you're taking care of yourself. All right, so I love y'all. I want y'all to be safe. Um, Safe in what I mean by that is taking responsibility for your own health. It has nothing to do with uh, somebody coughing on you or anything like that. And the body is so amazing that whatever you tell the brain is going to bring that about. So if you think that somebody coughing on you is going to cause you to become ill, then be it unto you what you desire. You will get what you wish. So we got to remember that our thoughts have power and we have to remember our words have power. So turn off the television, get off of social media, stop Letting your brain get trained and brainwashed by corona, corona, coronavirus, coronavirus, because all of it's a farce. It's a misdirection. And if you think I'm lying, when you go to the CDC, try to go to the CDC and look up heart disease, all of a sudden the page doesn't come up. Doesn't come up. That's for a reason. They won't let you go to the page. They hiding that info. They know what's up. It's the only page that I haven't been able to get to. It's coronary artery disease, and they know what's up, and now you do. All right? So pass this, share this along um, so that we can get the word out as much as possible. And um, subscribe if you want to get more videos on how to keep yourself safe. Um, If you want to hear some music, got new music coming, so... Definitely make sure you keep following the page for more updates. All right. Thank you.